Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I wanted to hop on for a few minutes. I haven't been on in a little while. I've been wanting to come on and do a video uh, some more about a book I've been reviewing about deliverance, which I'm going to be doing very soon with the holidays and stuff. And you can probably tell my voice is a little rough. <laughs> so I've been battling a cold for the past few days. Um, it's a more of a sinus issue and things. Um, but hope everybody else is doing well. I wanted to come on and uh, kind of impromptu. And I wanted to make a post and wasn't quite sure how to word it. And I understand, uh, as with a lot of stuff that I say, um, this in particular, though, this truly may upset some people. Um, and I really hope that it doesn't cause people to unfriend me, but unfortunately I think it might, which I find sad because even though these, there are people that may not agree with me on this, um, I'm not going to unfriend them or call them and, uh, call them names or, or have any strong opinions about them personally because of this. Um, but I feel like I need to say something, and so I'm going to say it, and not because I'm an authority on anything, but just to maybe get you thinking about this particular thing. So The Chosen. Um, I've really kept to myself for a while about my feelings, about <laughs> my, my feelings, about The Chosen. Uh, I've, I don't watch it, and uh, I tried watching it, and I just couldn't do it. And I'm not trying to make it like super spiritual or anything like that, but I, I had some hesitancies and wasn't quite sure why. And then when I started doing some research on it and just listening to interviews um, from the director and from people that were involved in it and seeing some of their personal Instagram posts and things and seeing what their faith was, I started really being very concerned. And you may be thinking, well, you know, who are you to judge or who are you to say anything? Um, or it's just a TV show, what does it matter? Or these people, you know, they're just portraying actors. But it goes beyond that. And um, I'm not going to get on here and share a bunch, like a bunch of facts with you. I'm really just going to encourage you as my friend, and if you're a believer in Christ, as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, who su should subscribe to what Scripture testifies of Christ and who He is and His attributes, and should not deviate from that in any way, shape, or fashion. Um, I'm going to really strongly suggest to you that you do research on this. I, I can't watch The Chosen. I, I just can't do it. There, and the more that I, I, I dig and the more that I find out, the more I'm going, okay, which Jesus is this? Uh, that that's the biggest concern that I have and I'm not really somebody that watches a whole lot of TV I'll watch it on occasion but it's rarely ever that I'll watch TV and um, I just don't watch it much anymore it's again it's not because of a spiritual thing it's just there's just not much of anything good to watch anymore <laughs> but um, I'm not opposed to good Christian shows but what I find troubling is is that this show really has an ecumenical background to it. It's saying that it's calling all these different faiths together. And I, and I wonder, my, my question in the back of my mind is when I look up things and I look at, you know, things that have been said by the director himself of like 95% of the show is not based on scripture. Only 5% is. And there are things that I've seen clips of the show and I'm going, like, which Jesus is this? Um, there are a lot of Mormons that are drawn to this show. I mean, if you look this up, you Google it, for example, you're going to see a lot of articles written by Mormons that are saying, I, I saw one yesterday and printed it out, was reading it. And then I had to look up some terms in it because I'm like, what, what does that even mean? What they're talking about? And it was an article that said five reasons why every Mormon should watch The Chosen and support it. And so I'm reading this article and it was saying that one particular, um, seen in in the show uh basically verified their their view of restoration according to mormonism because they believe that the church is an apostasy that joseph smith taught this after the apostles died and after the resurrection that the church became an apostasy um that's not the same christ uh, that that's not the same christ and and that concerns me in of itself and again if you, if you don't agree with me it's okay 
but I'm telling you, I'm just suggesting to you in a loving way, please do your research. I mean, there's a really good documentary out, or documentary, I shouldn't say necessarily a documentary. There's a really good video that I actually took time. It's five and a half hours long, and I just put in my earbuds dur during the weekend and just listened to it and, and watched and went back and verified some of the things that they were saying. And I'm like, this is troubling. And it's not about being a heresy hunter or anything. It's just troubling. And I'm going, from a Christian standpoint, I'm going, which Jesus is this that's being represented? Is this the Jesus that's Lucifer's brother? Is this the Jesus that was, that was created? <coughs> Excuse me. That was created um, that didn't exist with God the Father? Is this the Jesus that... Um, that has to depend on Mary, that Mary's a mediator as well, that other dead saints are to be prayed to as well because we can't get to Jesus just as the mediator, even though script, like which Jesus is this <laughs> that's being portrayed here? Um, if, if Mormons are flocking to this show, what Jesus is being represented? And so... Again, I'm not saying I'm not saying this as a if you watch the show that that's a determining factor if you're saved. I'm not saying anything like that, but I'm I am telling you that it would be good for you to consider doing some research. Some to looking into this and seeing is is this truly representing Christ who is spoken of in scripture, who is testified of in scripture. Um Christ who was not created, who has existed from for for forever, that, that he has been been from the beginning, that he was the one that actually created the earth, that he's not Lucifer's brother, that um that we're not going we're not trying to reach some sort of state of exaltation to where we are going to become God someday and rule over planets. Um that we don't pray to dead saints, that we don't support trans uh, meditational practices. Um, I mean, the, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, there's concerns that I have. And, um, so anyway, I wanted to do a quick video and I, I thought about trying to share one of the videos and I thought, you know, people are just gonna, you'd start doing that. And if people want to do that, that's fine. I just felt like if I do that, then people are in, immediately, it's like, it's kind of hypocritical because people get really bent out of shape, especially in the charismatic church. Um, well, in, it doesn't have to be in a charismatic church, but just use that as an example. <coughs> For all the talk of, you know, discernment and, you know, calling out every devil that there, that doesn't even exist, that there, there are devils that exist, but there are people that just assign names to them, for example, that don't exist. For all that talk, as soon as someone comes out and expresses some concerns about something like this or something as simple as this to open up a dialogue, um, then the tables are flipped and they're like, well, you're just, you just have a religious spirit. This is not a religious spirit. This is just someone coming on here as your friend and saying, you need to be cautious about, I mean, you need to really be looking into this. If someone is portraying this, <coughs> Excuse me. I just like I said, just have a cold. That's all it is. If um, if someone is saying, it's one thing if it was like a secular show or something like that. I mean, we should easily, as Christians, we should be um, not disobeying our conscience, sinning against our conscience, according to Romans fourteen, and understanding what would please God, what would not please God for us to be watching and to to guard our eyes and and such. It's quite another for a show to say this is the authentic Jesus and then to have certain things in there to where you have other faiths that are not Christian that are saying, oh, we love this. This is wonderful. This is the Jesus we've always wanted. Huh. I hope that that's bringing some red flag to you to go, wait, what? Like, this is the Jesus that you've always wanted. So why isn't the Jesus of Scripture sufficient for you to understand who he is? 
to read and to understand what his word says and to, to learn about who he is through his word and to not contradict that. And then to portray a Jesus that only 5% of the show is based on scripture. And, I, and, I, and that's not me saying that. That is the director saying that. That 95% of the show is based on is not based on the Bible. He said that in an interview. I heard it with my own ears. So I don't I don't know, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. But um that's that's not the authentic Jesus when you're you're basing it on what you think Jesus should be. Um the Christ, the, the true Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, is the one that we are to present to people, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter how offensive it is, because it is going to offend people, and yes, God, God is loving, and He is merciful, and He is gracious, but He is also just, and there's also, He is also wrathful. We cannot ignore that. And I, there's people that are wanting to ignore that. They're wanting to say, well, God isn't, God isn't angry. Yes, he is. He hates sin. I, I'm not sure why we're okay with saying things that are unbiblical to appease our own sensibilities and to appease our own conscience in, in order to feel better about this. So I'm, I'm just asking you and, and suggesting please do your research if you want to know what what the video I was that watched or you want to check into it I can point you to some directions and then from there you can make your own decision and 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 weigh that out I'm not the authority on on this but I will tell you there th I've kept it to myself for months like I've come across things that the main actor has said in his own post and the things that he's promoting and um there there's stuff that i'm going okay i don't i don't know exactly what to do with this because i know as soon as i say something like instantly it's gonna be like well you're just judgmental well you're just religious well you're just legalistic well you're just this or that and instead of saying well maybe this is coming from a place of concern that we're embracing that that many people are embracing something that is um drawing people to an ecumenical type thing and we're not we're not told to be that way um you can you can minister the love you can minister the truth of the love of god um without compromise without compromising and it still be love it doesn't mean that everybody's going to see it as love but you can still, you can minister the word of God, minister the gospel. In love is what we're supposed to do, in spirit and in truth. We're supposed to worship God in spirit and in truth. We're supposed to testify of Christ, and we're supposed to be truthful. And when we do that, we're walking in love. We're telling people. We're wanting to warn them. This, like, when we're telling them the gospel, we're wanting to warn them because we don't want people to perish. Now, in this instance, when I'm telling you about the chosen, I'm just saying... Please consider doing some some searching out on this, um, because there there's some concerns. I mean, when it's when it's really the biggest concern I have, along with a lot of other ones, but the biggest one is this is really going down the path of ecumenicism. And and the question I keep asking myself when I see clips from the show, I'm going, which Jesus is this? Is this the Mormon Jesus? Is it the Roman Catholic Jesus? Is this, um, you know, which Jesus is this? Which one? Which one? Because only 5% of the show is based on scripture. So which one is this? So I hope you don't unfriend me because of this, because that, that to me, it seems like a small thing. Um, I know that there are people that will be, that'll unfollow and they'll get mad at me and they'll, and I can't control that. I'm, I haven't unfriended people. It's sad, sad to say, you know, with that, well, this is not sad, but I haven't unfriended people because they watch The Chosen. I don't dissociate from people because they watch The Chosen. I don't, I, I, I don't understand why we're adopting things as the church that the world is doing right now, and we're just 
shutting people down and we don't want to have a discussion about it. And we get so offended that we're like, well, I'm just going to unfriend them and I'm going to block them because they have devils and I'm just not going to listen to anything they have to say instead of going, well, I don't agree with them, but I'm still going to be friends with them. Or, hmm, I wonder, you know, that's got me thinking. I've had my own concerns watching this. Maybe I should check into this and then make a decision from there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that probably just opened up a big old can of worms. But um, if you watch The Chosen, I still love you. <laughs> I still love you, but I, I'm just telling you. There's no but to that. Um, I, I'm just telling you, maybe you need to look into it. Maybe you need to look into it. Um, for a show that's saying that they're presenting the authentic Jesus. Maybe you should look into it. So, anyway, um, I hope that that's helpful to somebody. There's videos out there that you can watch. There's one that you can look up that's literally five hours and 45 minutes, I think. You can break it up. You don't have to watch it all at one time. You can just put in some earbuds like... I did and just listen, excuse me, listen to it in chunks as you're doing housework or whatever, driving home and then look at the stuff yourself. I mean, evaluate the stuff yourself. Don't get so, don't, don't, don't shut it out, but look it up yourself and verify it and make sure. And then from there, make, make a choice and don't unfriend people because they don't watch the show. <laughs> That's silly. I'm sorry. I'm going to say that, but that's silly. If I get unfriended because of saying something because I don't watch The Chosen, then, um, sorry. I mean, I, 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 I'm personally, I'm, I'm past the point of, um, wanting to coddle people in, in not saying something, um, about that, about different things that are concerns. And then from there, being able to still love each other and maybe walk away from the conversation, if it opens one up and going, okay, well, we don't agree on this, but we're st we still um, can act cordial to one another and, and be mature and not, not just shut people out because they don't agree with with something like that. And, and as Christians, we should be as true Christians, we should be agreeing on coming back to what Scripture says and defending the faith. We are told in Jude to contend for the faith, to defend the faith. And Galatians reminds us that if an angel or someone else should come to you with another gospel that you have heard through Scripture and preach to you another word, then they are to be cursed that's anathema um it might interest you to kind of look into some of the things that are being said who's who's supporting this who's working on it um again a concern of mormonism and the thing is is that mormonism is being lumped into being christian it's not christian it's not they, they deny a lot of the core tenets, the, fu the fundamental Orthodox Christianity. And they need to hear the gospel. And the loving thing to do is to say, no, actually, if you're okay with this, then there's something that's wrong with this because the Jesus you believe in was created and had sex with a, a goddess um, and God is in... They believe that God the Father is in a bodily form and that he became God and ruled on another planet and then created, it like Jesus is the firstborn of those. And so then all this works-based stuff. Hi, Isabel. And it goes on and on and on. And um, which Jesus? I mean, again, that's the question. That's the question I keep asking myself. Which Jesus is this? So... I could beat a dead horse with this. I'm not going to do that. But um, anyway, I thought I'd say something. Uh, oops. Um, if you watch it, I still love you. Um, if you don't watch it, be willing to have conversations with people 
Um, are you saying that, I'm assuming, Isabel, you're saying that uh, Mormons, uh, Mormons are involved in this. One of the executive producers, if I'm not mistaken, is Mormon. Um, they filmed this on a Mormon set in Utah. Um, they had the uh, permission from the church to do so. This is the first time that anything that was produced by non-Mormons was done on that set. Um, they got the permission from the apostles, the 12 apostles. See, they believe in apostles and prophets too. Uh, they believe in, in tongues, and they believe in prophesying and, and, and all these different things. Um, they got permission to do that. Um, the uh, company that puts out their uh, show is under, it used to be under Vid Angel, which was initially founded by two Mormons. It's now owned by multiple different families of different faiths, is my understanding. And now, uh, because they face a lawsuit because of... Um, copyright issues or something like that with the video with uh, several years ago with their uh, company. Um, and if I'm getting this wrong, someone correct me, that's fine. Um, they're now called Angel Studios. Um, that's interesting. Angel Studios. Could be reading more into that. I don't know. But Angel Studios, it's fascinating. Um, um, yeah. I uh, said I haven't watched... I've watched very, very little of it, just clips and scenes here and there, and um, it was enough for me to go, mm, yeah, and then seeing a lot of other things in addition to that, the main character who plays Jesus, he's a Roman Catholic, he has done multiple videos of uh, praying the rosary, he does uh, the voiceover for Jesus for um, an app called uh, Hollow, H-A-L-L-O-W, which is a Catholic app. For praying the rosary he has I have a screenshot a while back that I, the one of the things that troubled me like I was just doing some random looking one day of I thought about the chosen and like I said I didn't want to get into all this but I'll just share a few uh, just this is that there was one post that he had a picture of him I think in Rome and <clears throat> he's met the Pope and that's a big deal to him there's different affiliations he has with with different people that are pro LGBTQ they're um, that uh, it, but anyway, there was one particular thing that um, I was trying to think of the other things because my mind's that's why I made that face because my mind's going blank. Um, there was, um, oh, okay. So, uh, one other thing too was like, for example, he was in Rome and he had a picture of himself with uh, Saint Padro Pei, Peo. I may be saying the name wrong. But um, they had preserved this man's body. I don't know how many hundreds of years ago he died, but he's a Roman Catholic saint. Um, this actor was in front of his his uh, glass encased tomb, and he was talking about how he was so thankful to make the pilgrimage there and that he's had communication with this dead saint. That's why, that's why I'm going, which Jesus is this? <laughs> I, I just can't bring myself to watch it. And I don't think I'm better than anybody else because I, I'm like this. Don't I'm not saying that. I know some people are going to think, well, you just think you're so much better and just so much pious. And so I don't think I'm superior. I'm just, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm, I sin every day. Like I make mistakes every day. I sin every day. Not habitually trying to. It's just because I live in a we live in a fallen world, and I am not glorified yet. I make mistakes every day that I have to go before God and repent, whether it's my attitude or the way I think about things or you know whatever it could be. I make mistakes every day and have to go before the Lord and repent and ask God to be led by His Spirit and to testify of Him and to to glorify him in all that I do, whether being a mother, whether being a wife, or just being, and, and being a disciple of Christ. So I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I, far, far from it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like Paul, I'm like the chief of, uh, chief of sinners. I mean, I really, it, it is by the grace and mercy of God that I can even not be who I once was. Um, but there are things that just seeing this stuff and I'm going, I just can't, I can't bring myself to watch it.
And there are people that are visualizing the actor when they're praying to Jesus. I mean, there's interviews done. Pastors' wives saying this stuff. That they're that when they when they pray to Jesus, they get in their private time. That they're visualizing that actor as Jesus, and they're having this deep encounter. Like that's idolatry, guys. That's not. That's not. We are not to do that. I mean, we're get, It's it's just getting. It's so. If if you're truly getting into the Word of God and you're digging in, and your your testimony may be, well, I you know I've drawn closer to Christ and I'm getting in the Word more because of this show. Then I hope that you're seeing the discrepancy of how much is being added because of um, poetic license and because of creativity in, in film directing and stuff like that, that I get that to a certain point. But again, when you are making a show about Jesus and you are saying out of your mouth, this, sh this show represents the authentic Jesus, which Jesus? Which one? When the director says that he believes that Mormons worship the same Jesus as we do, he has said that. And that he will sink or swim on that. He has said that. He has been on numerous sites, on LDS sites, giving interviews. He supports their beliefs. He backs them up. Uh, which Jesus? I don't know. Well, it's it's not. It, okay, I've said enough. So I'm going to hop off here because uh, one of my children is getting into some chaos. Um, I hope this helps somebody. If you're angry with me, I hope that uh, you're mature enough to reach out to me and to um, to to converse with me about it and to be respectful. I don't dislike anybody. I don't. <sighs> See, I struggle. I struggle with a, uh, the type of ministry in particular that I do. I struggle with sharing things because it's not easy. And I'm not saying that to make myself a martyr or anything. But it's not easy and it's not pleasant to say things sometimes that you know that it's going to cause problems with relationships you've had for years or decades or people that have conversed with you and and family and, you know, just it's hard to say things. But it's going to be a lot harder it's a lot harder to not tell the truth and to know that you're going to stand before the Lord when you should have said something about specific things and you didn't say anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Well, take this as you can. If you want resources to test out, to test against scripture, to verify, I can I can point you to some resources. If you'd like, you can private message me. That's fine. I wasn't quite sure what to title this. I just thought I'd hop on for a few minutes while my voice was still kind of holding out. Um, and I got to record a podcast for tomorrow morning. And then uh, I am going to pick it back up with the deliverance on the pigs in the parlor. So stay on the lookout for that. I want to do that this week. I haven't felt well the past few days, but again, it's just like, it's just a sinus infection. So, and I've verified that. So praise God, if, any, if anybody's wondering, but, um, anyway, thank you guys for your time, for your, um, patience. Love yeah. each, yes. Um, love each and every one of you guys. Um, and, uh, I'll catch you guys again sometime soon. Be blessed on this fabulous Monday.